Hi, my name is Larry Jordan, and welcome to this Power Up webinar on audio filters and editing in Final Cut Pro 10. Whether you're looking for simple tips on editing audio or you want to understand how some of the filters work that are in the Effects browser, this is the webinar you want to pay attention to. All too often, it's easy to focus on what the pictures look like, but what drives the imagination and what controls the content is very often not the picture, but the sound. And it's making your sound sound better that I want to cover today. By the way, we have a new subscription service. All of our online video training, tutorials, and webinars are now available via a subscription. This includes all of our Final Cut Pro 10, Adobe CS6, and brand new Autodesk Smoke training. For one low monthly fee, you get streaming access anywhere, anytime via the Internet. And as a bonus, subscribers can attend any of our live webinars for free. This is a fast and low-cost way to access all of our online training. To learn more, visit LarryJordan.biz slash subscriptions. This webinar builds on what we covered earlier in Webinar 62, working with audio in Final Cut Pro 10. Today, I want to briefly review setting levels, editing and trimming audio, creating, applying, and modifying roles, and selecting, applying, and modifying audio filters. The absolute number one rule of audio is that audio levels during final export must never exceed 0 dB. They can exceed this level during editing, and often do, because we're not paying attention to levels. But it's critical that they never exceed zero for final output. This causes distortion, and distortion cannot be repaired. Final Cut Pro 10 measures audio as peak levels. There are other audio measurements which are based around average sound levels. That's not what Final Cut shows. Final Cut displays audio on a scale called DBFS, decibels full scale, and this is what we see inside the audio meters. There's a lot of discussion now about how loud is loud, and I recently, like three days ago, in my blog wrote a how loud is loud, and you can also find it inside our editing resources library. Just do a find on my website for how loud. It'll automatically show you the article. When I'm mixing for the web, I tend to set my peak levels between negative 3 and negative 6 dB. If I'm doing work for broadcast or cable, these levels change. Final Cut Pro 10's audio filters and support for high-quality audio formats is excellent. However, like Final Cut Pro 7, Final Cut Pro 10's mixing capability is extremely weak. If you're doing sophisticated audio projects, I recommend you export your audio and mix it in a dedicated audio application such as Pro Tools, and here you would export using X to Pro, or Audition, and you would export your project using X to 7. Apple says new mixing capabilities are coming soon, and frankly, I can't wait. So let me show you how to edit audio-only clips to the timeline, how to set audio levels for mixing, how to create split edits and trim audio clips, how to add and modify audio fades, how to select only one track of audio, how to create, apply, and modify roles, and how to apply a variety of audio filters and effects. All right, here's a project I've got inside Final Cut. And if we play this, we'll hear that we've got two nice talking heads. Uh, I have vivid recollections of being in grade school uh, and getting bored with uh, fifth grade math. <laughs> this is Dr. Vint Cerf. Uh, he literally could be accused of being the founder of the internet. I had the great pleasure of doing this interview in 2004 as he was speaking to a group of high school kids on reasons to stay in school and study math and science. And I am incredibly grateful to Dr. Cerf for allowing me to use both the good takes and the bad takes from our interview, as well as Alcatel Lucent, who were the people that asked me to do the interview. Except as I'm looking at this, I would like to be able to see levels. It's nice to have these small little jobbies here. How do we get the big audio meters? Just click on it, sometimes double click to get its attention. And when you do, the audio meters show up over here on the right. If you put your cursor on the dividing vertical line between the meters and the timeline, you can make these as wide as you want. As we play this, I think children start out. Notice that our levels are around negative 12. This is a little low for me. I may record at that level, but I don't like doing the final export at that level. So to pull the levels up, we'll just grab that black line and drag it up. Children start out 
as natural scientists. Much better. Now, if I wanted to fade up to that, hold the Option key down, and Option click anywhere on the black line, that sets a keyframe. Then drag the keyframe up and down to be able to change the level within the clip so he starts soft. I think children start out and he goes and grows in volume. To delete a keyframe, click on it so it goes gold, press the big delete key, click on it so it goes gold, press the big delete key, and it's done. So we can set levels using the black rubber band dragging up and down, or option clicking to be able to set any quantity of keyframes that we want. We're not really going to focus much on levels today, except that I want you to be able to hear it. So we'll just pull this up enough that we can, in fact, hear it. And we'll get on with the rest of what I want to talk about. This has been an excerpt of a Power Up webinar on audio filters and editing inside Final Cut Pro 10. For the complete version of this online training, please visit our store at LarryJordan.biz store and look for Webinar 73.